What's going on guys, it's Omniarch and today I'm going to bring you a brand new video doing a classic commentary style video uh, and today I want to talk about why Call of Duty is dying. Now I know that this topic has been discussed a million times on YouTube uh, but it's something that I'm really passionate about and I was just, you know, right behind you guys, right behind the camera is this new TV that I got for Christmas which is fucking awesome but I've been playing uh, a little bit of Modern Warfare Remastered and I will admit um, that I have not touched Call of Duty in a very long time. Uh, the gameplay that you've been seeing on my channel has just been saved on my computer i've been playing a ton of skyrim uh, and just you know watching videos on youtube in my free time and i have not at all been playing call of duty uh, and, you know, I just jumped on Modern Warfare Remastered because I was like, you know, it's been a long time. I really should get back on the grind. You know, I'm really going to start to suck garbage. Like, I'm going to be fucking trash uh, at Call of Duty if I don't play it now. So, you know, um... So I've, I've been playing a little bit of gun game, just getting back into Modern Warfare Remastered. And uh, to be honest, you know, I just wasn't really having that much fun. I mean, gun game is fun, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, I think gun game's a little bit slow in Modern Warfare Remastered, in my opinion, but that's a topic for a different video. Um, and I was wondering, like, you know, this game is amazing. Like, like Call of Duty 4 was the shit. I remember when it came out, I was addicted to it. Uh, and I've been addicted to Call of Duty for years now, and, and you know, every year the game comes out and I get it on launch day and I play it and I get addicted, uh, and this is the first year where I'm not feeling that, and I was just, you know, playing and I was like, why don't I feel the same way that I used to, you know, it, it's really weird to, to just fall out of love with a game that's that I've been playing for literally like 10 years or more, um, so, <clears throat> you know, I, I wanted to make this video and I wanted to talk about it and I think that there's... Uh, a lot of reasons why Call of Duty is dying, and there's also a lot of misconceptions about why Call of Duty is dying, and I think the first one that I want to talk about is lack of innovation. I think a lot of people are saying, you know, Call of Duty is dying or is dead, basically, because they don't innovate, or when they do innovate, it's stuff that the player base doesn't actually want, uh, and, and to a degree, I think that's correct. You know, I know a lot of people think every year Call of Duty is the same game, and, and they don't understand why people buy them. Um, despite I feel that's not true, you know, obviously the game engine feels the same, but the games are different. However, I really don't feel like that is the problem with Call of Duty because, and this is the main thing that I want to point out, uh, CSGO or Counter-Strike in general has been like the same game for a very long time, you know, uh, they don't add jetpacks, they don't add new guns, really, I, I mean, they do a, a little bit, but uh, it's not like, you know, a yearly thing where they update and add new stuff, and add, or they add like skins, but they don't add more core content to the game, you know, the game is pretty much the same, uh, pretty much the same skeletal structure uh, every, you know, all the time, it's just always like that, and that's why, you know, people who started playing Counter-Strike a long time ago are really, really good at it now because it's the same thing, and Counter-Strike has grown in popularity over the years, especially on YouTube, and especially the pro scene, uh, you know, Counter-Strike has grown a lot more lately, and that game is not innovating, or they're not trying to innovate as strongly as Call of Duty is, you know, so when you say, oh, Call of Duty is not innovating, it's like, okay, yeah, but Counter-Strike is getting a lot of Call of Duty's player base, uh, and they haven't innovated in forever, you know, what they have is a very consistent, um, game where when you jump on you know what you're going you know what to expect and you know that your skill in the game is based on how good you are how well you do is based off of your own personal skill basically i know and i know there's probably some rng obviously in every video game there's going to be uh, and there's always going to be those random bullshit grenade deaths or whatever but you get my point right so counter strike has not been innovating and you know so therefore i feel like it's kind of uh you know, the, the case is not that black and white for me. You know, when you say Call of Duty is dying, it's not, this is why Call of Duty is dying. That's not good enough for me because, like I said, there's other games that really, you know, Counter-Strike's not innovating, innovating uh, enough or at all, and they're still, they have a strong player base. So, you know, and I know that Call of Duty still, you know, I believe, at least in um, North America or, you know, in... Uh, Europe or whatever, I'm pretty sure Call of Duty has a bigger player base than CSGO, but I know worldwide I think CSGO has a bigger player base. I'm not entirely sure on that, so don't quote me. I'm not an expert at CSGO. I'm terrible at the game, so I don't play it. Um, but that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. So if innovation isn't the problem with Call of Duty, then what is it? And I personally think that, and I know this definitely applies to me, but I feel like a lot of people are burnt out of Call of Duty, and I feel like maybe it's not Call of Duty, but the first person shooter genre in general, uh, and it's still like a super popular genre, and it's still like a juggernaut in the gaming industry, but I think it's on the decline, and you know, 
it's weird to think about because it's been dominant for so long, right? Um, but when you think back to the early 2000s and the late 90s, you know, when you look at the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 1, what games were popular on those? Well, you had platforming games, 3D platformers. I mean, look at uh, Spyro and look at Crash Bandicoot and uh, Super Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie, you know, all these games. Those were what were really, really popular back in the day, and every developer, uh, every developing company, uh, was trying to make the next Mario 64. They were copying it, and they were, you know, just trying to make their own really successful platforming franchise. Uh, and that's why you had so many platforming games back in the day. And then. When we switched over to the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox and the GameCube, I mean, not so much the GameCube, but then you had games like Halo come out and the first Call of Duties came out and Medal of Honor came out. And I know Medal of Honor first came out on the PlayStation 1, but you, you get the point. So these games came out and those games exploded and people were like, holy shit, you know, uh, this is something that we haven't really seen on this caliber before. I mean, you know, you had Doom on the N64 and you had, you know, some other shooting games, but they weren't like as explosive and uh, there's also GoldenEye, obviously GoldenEye is like the grandfather of first person shooters but you know once we moved into a console that had higher graphical capabilities uh, we could do first person shooting games a lot better and I think that's when it shifted from platformers to first person shooters and nowadays when you're trying to find a brand new platforming game it's really really difficult because all that you have uh, are a handful of not very good ones or maybe they're indie games which you know I'm not discrediting discrediting indie games but you know a lot of times indie games are a lot shorter than larger uh, AAA development games or or whatever so you know that's the shift that happened when we, we went from the PS1 to the PS2 or the um, you know N64 to the GameCube and the Xbox those are the games that started to become dominant and moving into the next generation of the PS3 uh, and the 360 and everything we got uh, way stronger online support and you're not really going to do a 3D platformer online, but what you can do is verse each other in first-person shooter games, and I think that is where, and obviously, you know, on the original Xbox, Halo and everything, those were huge, but um, that is where, you know, that's why it stayed dominant for the whole, you know, the whole ride up until now. Uh, and now, obviously, you know, with Minecraft coming out, and then you have all these other survival games that come out, like Rust and... Um, you know, oh shit, what were the other ones? I know there's Ark Survival or something. There's like a ton of survival games. Um, DayZ is like kind of a survival game, third person shooter, but you know, that's I think kind of that that has become a little bit more dominant now. Um, so I think basically what I'm getting at with all of this rambling is the first person shooter genre is ending and something else is taking its place and I haven't been in the gaming scene long enough to really know what that next thing is. Um, maybe it will continue with the Minecraft type of creative game or maybe we'll, maybe we're just going to dilute down to mobile gaming or, or something like that and I would hate to see that happen but I think people are just kind of tired of first person shooters right now. Like I said, you know, I've been playing Call of Duty for like 10 years uh, and first person shooters have been pretty dominant for that entire time. You know, every year Call of Duty sells the most games, you know, uh, and I think that at this point, you know, the novelty of the first person shooter genre has just completely been depleted to uh you know a level where people just don't really care that much anymore and that's really really unfortunate and it sucks because you know call of duty is something that's been consistent in my life for a decade now and i just don't know like why i don't want to play it anymore but i think i'm just kind of burnt out you know uh, and on top of that every year you know and this is why i think that it's not a black and white issue with call of duty like why is it dying it's not for one specific reason uh, i think that's a big part of it people are just burnt out of the first person shooter genre um and on top of that every year call of duty's worse and worse you know I, I think with the exception of black ops 3 you know ghosts brought nothing to the table ghosts was a very boring game was it a bad game i don't know a lot of people hated ghosts and at the time i hated ghosts too but then advanced warfare came out and i was like wait ghosts isn't that bad uh, and you know, so the, the biggest problem with Ghost was the lack of innovation. You know, there was still uh, a good competitive scene. You know, everything Ghost was a, a good, decent boost on the ground game. Uh, the problem was that it just didn't bring anything new to the table. The kill streaks were garbage. The guns were eh, um, and the maps were kind of forgettable in my opinion. But you know, so that was the problem with Ghosts. So that game wasn't that good. That game was a letdown. And then Advanced Warfare came out, and everyone was like, "Oh, jetpacks!" Oh. Oh, oh, just kidding. This is fucking garbage. What, what is going on here? This was terrible, terrible idea. So then everybody hated Advanced Warfare, and I agree. Advanced Warfare. I think Advanced Warfare, um, you know, had fun search and destroy, and I liked to watch it competitively, but I hated Advanced Warfare. I think 
Ghost was probably, they were probably just as bad at each other. Some days I think Ghost was better, sometimes I think Advanced Warfare was better. I don't know, but they were both bad uh, in general. Advanced Warfare was just a shitty game, Ghost was just boring. Um, <clears throat> and then Black Ops 3 came out, and that was a little bit better. You know, I had fun with Black Ops 3 for a while, and then, you know, like I said, I've said this a million times in my videos, but they just kept patching the game and making guns worse and worse, and then I just lost interest and I didn't care, but it was fine because I already had Dark Matter and my Nuked Out Challenge and everything. So I was like, whatever, it's fine, the game's dead to me. Um, you know, I'll play it for my YouTube channel and that's it, and then we'll just wait till the next Call of Duty comes out, and then this game comes out, and Infinite Warfare is fucking even worse than Black Ops 3, uh, and it's just like, it's just so bad, it's just, it's like the ghosts of the fucking jetpacking games, in my opinion, you know, there's just nothing about the game that makes me want to play it, there's nothing new, the guns aren't exciting, there's nothing cool about the game, so, you know, while I'm saying lack of innovation isn't, uh, the problem, at the same time, you know, if you're going to release a new game, you have to at least try and make it better than your last one. If it, you know, CS:GO has they haven't updated a, they haven't updated CS:GO. Like they haven't released a new Counter-Strike game in a while. Call of Duty's asking for our $60 every year. And for what? You know, for what? What are you doing? You know, you're, you're releasing a new campaign. That's cool. But for the multiplayer guys, we don't really care about that too much, you know? And if you're going to release a game that's worse than the last one in pretty much every way, I mean, I really fail to see where Infinite Warfare is better than Black Ops 3. Like, in what way is it better? I, d I don't see it. So if we're paying money for a new experience every year, it's got to be better in some way you know you can't just it can't just be the same new thi it can't be the same thing with a new skin you know it just that's not worth sixty dollars to me so the problem is we're getting burnt out of the first person genre thing and then call of duty pushes out new guy new games every year uh and and it's not they're not better there's they're not doing anything more all they're doing is taking our money you know and uh, i think that's the biggest problem you know with call of duty is that every year uh they release a game without you know doing what we want as consumers you know it's just a new game and they're just looking to cash out in addition to the games not being worse every year they take less and less skill you know every game that comes out i feel like is there's just more rng every single time you know i think they take away your footsteps so you can't hear enemy footsteps uh they take away drop shotting or they take away you know quick scoping or they take away you know every game there's something new that they take away uh and then you're left with a basic rng game where every single map is a three lane map and there's hardly any cover uh, and every encounter that you get into is based on reaction time uh, and connection speed. So it, the games are just, not only are they not getting better, but it takes less and less skill. So you die more and more despite being a good player who's been playing for 10 years. So, you know, that's the problem is that the games are getting more and more watered down. So that way younger people can play it and feel like they're good. And then that, that's like a short term solution to their sales numbers. You know, they're thinking if the game is fun for the younger generations, then maybe we can get them hooked and, and maybe we can get them to keep buying. You know, they're the new customers, you know, the guys who have been playing for 10 years, they're going to, they're getting jobs and they're graduating college and they're not, you know, they're not going to stick around much longer uh, because they're going to start families and they're going to do this and that. And, you know, I think that's kind of stupid because I do know uh, a lot of older people who still play the game, but regardless of that, you know, they want the next player base. And that's totally reasonable but what they're doing is instead of making the game uh, attractive and making it so that they that the newer players want to get better what they're doing is they're watering the game down right out of the gate so the new players feel like they're good uh, so they keep playing uh, but you know once they hit a certain point where they realize like oh you know I'm not I'm not getting better at this game it's I'm pretty much doing the same thing every time uh, then we get bored you know and like I said that's only you get the short-term sale but next year you know less people are gonna buy the game and that's what's been happening every single year consistently since Modern Warfare 3 you know the, the numbers have been down since Modern Warfare 3 the, the whole time so you know those are the reasons I think that Call of Duty is dying and it really sucks and I think for me right now the biggest problem is that I'm just burnt out you know I don't feel like I want to put time and energy into this game because it's not as good as the last one and I feel like I'm not rewarded as much for any skill that I used to have at the game you know a lot of the things and a lot of my skills in the game are no longer applicable you know uh, in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 1 you know I would be able to use my headset and and you know patrol a certain area of the map 
uh, and figure out where enemies are going to spawn and where they're coming from and i can listen for their footsteps and i can control an area you know and do well just by being very aware of where the enemies are where there could be where they could be coming from and things along those lines uh in the new games every map is like a three lane map there's no cover that you can't really hide in a building you know it's just there's nothing you know and then with the jetpacks when someone spawns if they spawn behind you uh, even if it's a little ways away they can boost jump and boost slide over to you super fast and you know there's just none of the skill that i used to use in the older games in the new games and i know like okay i have to adapt as a player but really at, at the end of the day uh, the game is just a watered down version of what i used to play and that's just not as fun you know it doesn't require any you know thinking in my opinion you know yes you have to know when to boost jump or whatever but it, it's just there's a lot less to uh really know and to really take to heart when you're playing the game and it just feels cheap it just feels cheaper and, and that's what really sucks for me so not only am i burnt out with the franchise and with the like with the genre as a whole but uh the games are just getting worse so it's like you know i'm not gonna put in more time to learning a worse game that i'm already tired of playing so that's the problem and i think maybe a lot of other people feel that way too so i'm trying to figure out what's the next thing you know what do i play now you know I, like i said i've been playing a ton of the new skyrim the game is super super fun um i bought warcraft 3 actually which is a game from like 2002 or something like that um and i just heard it was really good so i got the basic version on g2a for like three dollars uh and the graphics are shitty but if it's a good game i don't give a fuck anymore just give me a good fucking game to play holy shit so that's pretty much my little rant and little opinion on call of duty and the first person genre as a whole i think moving forward we're you know we're probably going to see less uh success in the in the first person shooter genre um lower sales numbers than ever and things like that and that's really depressing but you know just like the platforming genre before it and you know the music games like guitar hero and rock band you know all of those games uh you know i think their time is coming to a close and they're always going to be around obviously you know they're always going to be a thing and they're really still they're good it's a good type of game it's a good genre of game it's really high action high fun high excitement uh and it's really you know a great genre but i think that the hype is long gone uh you know people have seen everything that a first person shooter can do at this point pretty much um so you know i'm wondering what the next thing is you know and, and you know hopefully it's something that i'll be really into uh but for now i'm gonna just keep struggling through call of duty from what i can uh and in my free time when i want to play something for fun i'm gonna be playing rpgs i'm gonna be playing you know hearthstone maybe or some other ca uh, card games or who knows just mmos maybe i don't know pokemon i love fucking pokemon pokemon <laughs> I love fucking Pokemon. Yes, I love fucking a Pikachu right in the ass. No, um, I do love playing Pokemon a lot. So, you know, those are the types of games that I'm having fun with right now. Uh, and hopefully you guys can let me know in the comment section below what your favorite games are. What were your favorite games of 2016? What games are you looking forward to in 2017? I know they're remastering Crash Bandicoot, which is going to be fucking amazing. I cannot wait for that shit. So hopefully uh that's really fun and i think it will be so that's pretty much it guys so if you enjoyed this video and if you liked any of the opinions or anything that i said in this video make sure you drop a thumbs up and if you hated the fucking video and i look like garbage today and you think i'm just fucking an ugly nerd then just thumbs down i don't care subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one uh, and that's pretty much it guys so thank you so much for all your love and support and uh this has been omni and i will talk to you guys again soon peace